So, the last topic we're going to cover is short-run macroeconomic policy. We're going to do it using ISLN BP model, but before we do it, maybe we should make a very quick revision of ISLN. Okay, we already talked about price flexibility in our previous video, and the main assumption ISLM that, uh, uh, that underlines the short-run analysis is that prices are fixed. So we are completely disregarding prices in our model. This is why it's short-run model, because prices do not have enough time to adjust to changes in, in the economy. Okay, and look, right away, we should see that fixed prices have a very nice uh, consequence for the model. And assuming that, let's just say, at the beginning, price level is just one, we get that nominal interest rate in the economy is exactly equal to real interest rate. So look, we don't need to worry about the difference between the two. For example, like an investment function, right? Because we should look at real interest rate. In this case, with the fixed prices, we don't need to care about that. The two are equal to one another. Okay, so how did ISLM model so, let's start with IS curve. IS curve, of course, IS stands for investment equals savings, which is equivalent equilibrium condition for the goods market to a different one that we use more often. This one says that income side GDP is equal to expenditure side GDP. And because it's ISLM, so this is closed economy, uh, we will have three components of expenditure, of expenditures in this model. First one is consumption. Of course, for simplicity, we are assuming that it's a function of, uh, of income. Of course, the higher the income, the higher the consumption. We're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna uh, re refrain ourselves from taxes in this model. Well, they would just make things more complicated, but they wouldn't add anything that is actually necessary for us. Uh, so we're gonna uh, have that consumption is not a function of disposable income, but rather just income alone. Yeah, this is all. We need. Then the second component is investment. Investment is a function of real interest rate usually. Well, it's a function of real interest rate, but in this model, nominal and interest rate are the same, so it's a function of interest rate alone. And finally, we will have exogenously given government spend. Okay, the second uh, uh, the second equation is, of course, the LM equation. It means LM comes from, of course, liquidity equals money. For liquidity, uh, is uh, our shorthand for money demand. Look, did it, as the first equation is showing us equilibrium on markets for goods and services, the second one is giving us equilibrium on money market. So we will have first money demand denoted by L, and money demand is a function of income. The higher the income, the more money we need for transactions, and interest rate, which of course is the cost, opportunity cost of holding money. 
And of course, this money demand must be equal to money supply that we're going to denote as O, M0. M0. Let's just say that uh, it's just M0. Okay, and look, I put all these functions in general form. Uh, so we do not need to dwell on the things that are unnecessary here. But let's review all the derivatives that we've got here. Look, first, if I differentiate consumption with respect to income, I'm going to get NPC, marginal propensity to consume. Of course, we should normally do it by uh, having disposable income here, but we excluded taxes, so it's not a problem. It tells us how much out of one additional dollar uh, household spend and consumption. Uh, so, in this case, we know that this must be between 0 and 1. So, it's definitely, uh, definitely uh, possible. Okay, now, in the second, uh, 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 the second derivative we can calculate over here is di di. So, this is the derivative of investment with respect to interest rate. This one, of course, needs to be negative. Why? Look, the higher uh, is the interest rate, the higher is the cost of obtaining money. So it's harder to get the money for investment. And we remember investments are purchases of capital goods by companies. And it will, of course, there's a second explanation. Like if interest rate is high, it's more, prof it's more profitable for companies to just keep money in the bank instead of, for example, trying to do some uh, investment projects. Okay, and finally, something we already discussed, so the derivatives, partial derivatives with, uh, of money demand, first with respect to income, this one is positive, and, uh, and uh, how does this work? Look, I know that, that you've heard this plenty, plenty of times, so let me just say, the bigger the GDP, the more goods we produce, the more money we need to purchase them, and finally, partial derivative of, uh, of money demand with respect to interest rate is negative, which simply means that the higher, uh, is the, uh, the higher is the interest rate, the higher is the opportunity cost of holding money in form of cash, right? The cash, uh, uh, the, the higher is the interest rate, the more money you are losing by keeping the money in your hand instead of buying a bond or purchasing uh, 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 or, or just keeping the money in the bank. Okay, look, we're not going to be solving this. Actually, I was considering it, but I decided there's no point. To, we would have to do a lot, a lot of, uh, of solving for both ISLM and for ISLMVP proofs, uh, finding slopes, Th those are all the things we already covered. You co some of them we covered during introduction to economic analysis, like general functions, equi uh, equilibrium with general functions, uh, for both ISLM and ISLMVP. Then, of course, you had it in macroeconomics, in intermediate macroeconomics. So, why? What is the point of repeating? So we're not going to do it. Uh, all I want you uh, to, to know is to know the main mechanisms that will govern uh, reaching the new equilibrium after either uh, increase in government spending or increase in money supply. And look, the same, we're going to do exactly the same, we're going to try exactly the same approach with uh, ISL MVP. Uh, under, in the description of this video, you will find 
all the material from introduction to economic analysis that covers ISLM, so all the proofs, uh, 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 all the proofs for slopes of the functions, uh, uh, whether equilibrium exists, whether the conditions, all of it will be uh, in the links in the description. And the same is going to be for ISLM MVP, but in the uh, uh, in the links for the next uh, next video. Okay, so because we know this model very well, let's just repeat the main mechanics uh, uh, behind what happens if we use uh, fiscal expansion or monetary expansion. Okay, so let's start with fiscal expansion. So, first we draw coordinate space with interest rate over here, income over here, of course here we have zero, and we've got some IS curve, and we've got some L Of course, at the intercept of the two, we will have equilibrium interest rate and equilibrium income. Okay, I hope you remember that IS represents all combinations of uh, all combinations uh, uh, all combinations of interest rate and income for which there is equilibrium in market for goods and services LM, all combinations of interest rate and income for which there is an equilibrium in money market. And of course, only at this point, there is equilibrium in both markets for goods and services and in the money market. Okay, so, yeah, let's just say the government decides to increase the level of spending. We know that this moves IS curve To the right. Okay, and right away we see that it has two consequences. First is that equilibrium level of income goes up, and the second is that equilibrium level of interest rate goes up. But of course, the more interesting question is why is this happening? And it goes more or less like this. When government spending goes up, then aggregated expenditures go up, right? Because aggregated expenditures are equal to income, income must go up. So this is what happens initially in the market for goods and services. But then, we haven't included what happens in money market. And look, what do we see? That if income increases, money demand increases. If money demand increases, assuming constant money supply, we expect the interest rate will go up. And of course, look, this has further consequences. Higher interest rate means lower investment. As investments are part of aggregated expenditures, it means lower GDP. I hope that you remember that this part that you see over here, we call crowding out of it. So, in the model, well, in, in, let's just say in real life, it's a little bit more subtle than this, but I don't want to dwell on something that I was explaining to you and uh, uh, your, your macroeconomics teachers were explaining to you in two different classes. But here we see that increasing income increases money demand, which causes increase in interest rate. So, 
and this higher interest rate is associated with local work, investment, and lower GDP. So we see that as a result, the composition of GDP changes. So we have higher uh, share of government spending, but lower share of private investment. Okay, but look, this is not important to us in the context of ISLM BP model. We, what is important to us is just this. Look, we need to know that what happens in general in the short run, in the closed economy, is that as government spending increases, it increases GDP, and then through money demand, it influences interest rate. Okay, so basically this is all we need to remember about fiscal expansion. We will use it as a base for analyzing fiscal policy within ISLM uh, BP framework a little bit later. Okay, so now let's move to monetary uh, expansion. So now we're going to assume that uh, we are going to assume that central bank is increasing money supply. Okay. Start by drawing short run equilibrium in for ISI model. So we've got IS here, LM over here, and for short run equilibrium somewhere here. Now, if central bank increases money supply, this moves LM to the right. And again, we see two consequences of such policy. We see that this is associated with lower interest rate and higher GDP. Now, again, what is most crucial for us and what we're going to use in ISLMP framework is the simple mechanism, mechanism behind this increase in GDP. Because look, if central bank increases money supply, then higher supply, lower with the same demand, it means we will have lower interest rate. But lower interest rate means higher investment. Higher investment as a part of aggregated expenditure means higher GDP. And look, these four steps, well, three steps technically, uh, uh, but those four changes are everything that we need to know from ISLM model to, to, to extend it to the open economy version of ISLM BP. Okay, so this is all for repetition of ISLM. In the next video, we're going to start by extending this closed economy model to open economy, uh, 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 open economy model. Okay, thank you and see you in the next video.